I seem to have been a little spontaneous and accidentally bought something. It's uh, just bent the door. Oh. <laughs> Door's gone back. Door's gone back. It's heavy. We got it from. Yeah. <laughs> oh, did he, did he tell you about the location? Yeah. Okay. Oh, right, stuff to get here. Well, they seem to be decent enough people. They actually did. Yeah. That's what I mean. They were just. So yes, this is my 1964 Bridgeport milling machine, which, as you can currently see, is in pieces and spread across the floor in the workshop. There are two reasons why it's in pieces. Number one, so we could get it off the vehicle that we had deliver it, which you saw previously. And number two, is so we could get it into the machine shop because the door to the machine shop is only a single door. I didn't get a chance to film the disassembly of the bridge pole. I picked the machine up from a firm in Manchester and it was sold as a spares or repairs machine and the pictures that they included on the listing it didn't look like it was in tip-top condition obviously we didn't know whether it ran the price I felt was reasonable for this state of machine as as it was shown in the pictures so I took a gamble in fact no I was spontaneous and just bought it and I took it back to my friend's workshop where he has forklifts where we could easily take the heavier parts off into small and manageable pieces that we could get off the trailer. When we had it at my friend's workshop we decided to put a plug on it. Yes, and see if it ran. And it did. So before I took it apart we checked it worked. It's a fully running Bridgeport milling machine. There's a couple of little pieces here and there that need a little bit of attention. It had a missing handle. The quill down feed does need a little looking at, especially on the speed selector. It doesn't want to engage as smoothly as I thought it should do. So that's something that we can look at. Most of all though, when I took it apart, as, I'll show, as you will see, this machine has revealed how good of a condition it's in and it just seems to be layered with years of dirt and dust when I walked up to the machine when we were collecting it I knew straight away it was not rust no it was literally just dirt but what was the dirt on? yes grease people seem to think that Bridgeports have grease nipples they don't have grease nipples, it's not for grease. In, our, in this case, with this bridge port, what it has done is protect it quite well. The machine itself, you can see all the original hand shaping. You can still see it on all the ways. I don't think the machine has had a heavy, heavy life. In the knee, they usually round with swarf, chips, and whether the machine has been cleaned previously and then greased, who knows. But when you look inside, I don't 
think it's had a hard life. Especially the fact that nothing's worn. But at some point, it's been sat, it's got dusty, but it's been covered with grease. So it's protected it. It's a good thing for me. When I took the gibs out, none of them look worn. They look original and they weren't even screwed in too far. So I think I landed up with a brilliant Bridgeport milling machine. We're gonna give it a good clean. We're gonna check everything over. There are a couple of spots of rust. So we're gonna get those cleaned up. We're gonna get everything lubricated the way it should be lubricated. We're gonna get rid of all the grease. We're gonna get this looking smart. I'm not going to paint it because I can already see from the areas we've already looked at the machine is in a good condition. It doesn't need a repaint. And I kind of think that once it's cleaned up, I think it'll have a little bit of character. It does have a coolant pump. When we tried, when we plugged it in and tried it, we got no sound whatsoever from the coolant pump. So that's something we can look at. That's something we can see if we can diagnose. It'd be nice to have the coolant pump running again and have the ability to, to have coolant when we're machining. The bed itself, again, like I say with the bed, it just needs a really good clean. It's covered in grease. There's a couple of, uh, looks like there's a, a couple of rusty spots, but it's nothing, nothing deep, nothing. It's, it's a surface rust. Next, I've got to try and get this part of the machine into the machine shop. Right, so as you can see, it's taken up a lot of space in here. Uh, we need to crack on with things, we need to get the place in ship shape uh, so we can get on with this project. So I'm going to put the top turret on my little trolley that I've got here. Uh, we should get that on, hopefully we'll get the bed on and then we'll put the saddle on top of the bed. Uh, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do with the head. I could do with the head being put somewhere so I can sort of take it apart on the bench. Um, so we'll, we'll try and put that somewhere. I might just leave it on the smaller smallest pallet uh, for now. And then we can uh, get to this piece. I say this milling machine is it's heavy I don't have arms like Arnold Schwarzenegger by the time I've got it in place Ooh. I wonder if he likes cups of tea too hmm. I wonder which brand he'd have this one's PG Thirsty work this. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right, I think for now, I'm going to leave it in this position. It's going somewhere here. But for now, I'm going to leave it in this position. Because I need to get into the back to deal with all the sludge inside and the old coolant pump. I, need to, I still need to get in there. So I'm going to leave it in this position, but I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to put it on some lower, lower timbers. We can clean this bit. We could probably get to the pump through the side door. There's the door on this side. We could probably get to the pump if we ever needed to. Um, but we just need to clean it out. It's disgusting inside. Now it's getting closer to the ground. It's getting much easier to, to lower. Um, to begin with, it felt very wobbly. But yeah, now we're getting it closer to the ground. It's feeling a lot easier to, to drop down. Right. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm off a joint. I've got a bridge port. I just, you know, when I was at college, I first learned on a Bridgeport. The Bridgeport was one of the first milling machines I ever used. And I've got my own. So join me next time when I will begin cleaning it and hopefully putting it back together again. Laters. Whew, this is a heavy bugger. Beautiful. If you'd like to see the pictures of the machine, as it was before I stripped it down, then head over to our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the description. Uh, they should be up. I'd just like to add an extra special thanks to my friend who you saw at the beginning of the video. He's been so much help on me getting the bridge port. Uh, he's also been with me on the journey, really, uh, from buying one. Uh, so, yeah. Big thank you. Thanks for watching.